Hello gentle viewers, this is Out Guardian welcoming you back to Out of the Park Baseball 22 with the Pittsburgh Pirates. Um, so I forgot to copy over my lineup. That would have been embarrassing. Let's do that right now. <clears throat> and let's talk about what we've done uh, in the previous episode. We were world champions uh, and we're preparing to defend our titles with some interesting changes the game. So, first things first, we didn't change much of the rotation. The rotation is pretty much last year's. We're hoping for a healthy year out of Caleb Bautista, but other than that, it's the same rotation as last season. The bullpen with new reliever Jake LeMaster... Uh, who we signed and then cut and then signed again. Because the game kept trying to make him a first baseman, uh, which is really stupid. And anyway, we got there in the end. Um, we promoted a couple of people. Uh, Virgil Hill. <clears throat> we sent from the second round. And to be quite frank, this is a bit of a gamble. He doesn't have a lot of professional experience, but we needed a reliable arm, and I think he will provide exactly that. Um, our closer is going to be Joe Burton. Uh, he did that a little bit for us last season. He seemed to do okay in the in that particular uh, transaction. And yeah, we're rocking 14 position players and 12 pitchers, which is not ideal. But I think we'll do okay. I think we'll do okay. But let's talk about the big change. Which is to our starting lineup. So, in case you missed last episode, we acquired Jeff Pierce. Uh, Jeff Pierce was... We decided we needed a big-time bat in left field. Somebody who could offer us some elite power and just protect the rest of the lineup. And we got him in Jeff Pierce. Only surrendering, quite frankly, a mediocre rookie who might someday prove to be a reliable bat, but for the moment at least, we made the right decision. We needed a major upgrade, and I think Jeff Pierce definitely represents that. He didn't come cheaply, but I think he'll offer us a much more impactful bat than we previously had in left field. Uh, we also traded Sean Winters. In fact, let's quickly jump over to our transaction log and that'll be an easier way to keep track of what happened um this a lot of this was this was a, a big trade to try to move around uh, mostly get rid of mike Serby because we didn't need him anymore but also to try to get some quality young players uh jake horowitz steve carraro both seem like they could be decent players as could Josh Grutten Cord. Um, so I think that's a big trade for us. Where is the John Win or the Sean Winter deal? When did I make that trade? Uh so hey friends, this is not a uh I said major transactions, didn't I? Maybe I did say complete. Okay. When did I trade Sean Winter? Hmm. Oh, here we are. Yeah, that's how we got Sergio Bermudez, uh, who's now our designated hitter. That's right. And that's us getting Jeff Pierce. So we've revamped our lineup by adding Bermudez and Pierce. Um. <clears throat> But the most important change room is actually in our infield. And let me explain. First things first, Manny Pozo was a good shortstop, but I think his most natural position is indeed third base. If you look at his skill set, he's got an amazing arm, good range, and he's pretty reliable. He could really play either position. But I think the difference is between... An above-average shortstop and a gold-glove third baseman 
I think we're a better team, quite frankly, with him playing third base. Our previous third baseman, Bobby Herrera, has moved to second base. Now, I'm not as confident about this move. His bat will certainly play. Uh, he did indeed win Rookie of the Year, as he should have. But I'm concerned about his lack of range and the fact he's somewhat error-prone. But he is good at turning double plays. Um, we will definitely monitor him and think about what to do in the future if it turns out he's not going to be a reliable second baseman for us. So the biggest change we made was another very bold move that could very well bite us in the ass, but I think was a smart move for the short term. We took our first round pick from last season, Mr. Clint Daly, and we promoted him to the major leagues. Now, he did do okay in the minors. He certainly didn't play poorly. He just didn't play very much. But I think he's relatively close to big league ready, and in particular, he looks like he's going to be an outstanding shortstop. So I think the net result of all these moves is going to be a positive experience for our infield, which should therefore help our pitchers out a bit, while still maintaining impact bats. Um, I think it's hilarious, by the way, that Greg Merrill hit 39 home runs, and I have to bat him 8th, because I literally have nowhere else to put him. Uh, that's how good this lineup has become. Now, there is a possible issue that could arise. Specifically, a lot of our players all think they deserve to be in the middle of the lineup. Well, there's only three positions that are in the middle of the lineup. Number three, number four, and number five. Eh, maybe number six. The important point is, I can't put everybody in all the positions. So Merrill in particular might start getting grouchy. If we're winning, I don't think he'll complain that much. Um, and let's not forget, we gave him a chance where the Rockies simply wouldn't. Uh, the Rockies just never seemed committed to letting him start. Or the Angels, for that matter. And so I'm hopeful that he'll be at least a little bit grateful that we not only gave him his chance to shine, but also gave him a contract extension. Um, and we'll see where that gets us with him. Um, but yeah, this could be one of the most formidable lineups in the entire major leagues. Um, thanks to our upgrades at Pierce and Bermudez at left and DH, respectively. Andres Avila, you've seen a lot of change, my friend. A lot of change over the years. And... <clears throat> If for some crazy reason, I guess it wouldn't be that crazy, but if for some reason Garrett Gunnels doesn't make the Hall of Fame, I think you're our next best chance. Um, I'd love to see you play for another four to five years to get yourself over that 2,000 hit uh, barrier, but I think if you can do that, I think you'll make it. Um, and something that people have commented on quite regularly, and it's certainly something I am looking into would be at some point shifting him away from catcher. Um, probably to play DH. And that might be coming fairly soon because Bermudez is going to want an awfully big contract in arbitration. Um, I just want to see how we do with him. And I definitely don't want to do it until I have a quality starting catcher ready to support us. Speaking of catchers, we did sign Danny Durbin in free agency to be our new backup. He's going to be pretty grouchy, too. He thinks he's a starting caliber catcher. He's not wrong. He's just not a starting caliber catcher on this team. And his bat isn't reliable enough for me to say trade Bermudez to get to put a Vila in at DH. And I really believe in him as a catcher. And an important thing, and I don't know how much this is going to affect how everything else in the game works, but it's an important thing to remember, is that if you don't, uh, if he's playing DH, he's going to get a war penalty. And I don't know how sabermetrically the game's Hall of Fame voters look at these things, but it would actually hurt his case potentially. Um, I am happy with what he's provided defensively at catcher. 
And I know a lot of people have been saying things like, how dare you? Um, he's not an elite catcher. And that's true, he's not. But he doesn't have to be. Is, I think, the big takeaway for me, anyway. Um, the statistical record we have shows that he has struggled with errors in the past. He's definitely had some pass the ball issues lately. Um, that's maybe his biggest weakness as a catcher. And he's not very good at throwing out base runners. But stolen bases just aren't a big part of the modern game. I don't mind if he allows a few stolen bases. And I think it's just more valuable to us as a catcher, even not being a premier catcher, um, than he would be as a DH, at least until we were able to get an upgraded catcher. Um, I wouldn't be I would be amiss if I didn't at least take a look and see what people are offering in the realm of catchers. Pete Carter is not the kind of guy I would reach out and acquire. Uh, he's not good enough. I have a very high standard for... It's not so much catchers need to be brilliant offensive players, but that I have a brilliant offensive player at catcher. And so if I'm going to bump him off. I'm either going to need to see a significant decline in his actual defensive performance, or someone else is going to really step up with a big-time bat. Um, yeah, the errors aren't great the past balls aren't great and he does give up a fair few stolen bases but look even in his worst season he was run on 26 times that's 26 stolen bases I'm not saying that's good because it isn't but it's certainly not bad his catcher ERA also seems to be quite reasonable um, so he's clearly working okay with our pitchers um, that's something that's not really captured um, in the ratings they have here because ability will be like blocking the plate um, and framing pitches to get additional strikes, whereas arm is ability to throw stuff out. I don't know how or even if OTP actually captures how catchers work with pitchers, but cool that they like him because we just won the World Series with him. So again, I'm just for me. I don't think it's sensible to disrupt the flow we have as a team just for the sake of improving a little bit at catcher defense. I hope that makes sense. Um, look at Gretencord. The guy we just acquired from Atlanta is already our, our number two prospect. Um, I like how none of them are, are ranked in... Oh, no, he is, he's ranked 23rd. <clears throat> Yeah, you could be an important contributor, but you're also very far away from that. I do love your gap power, though. I think of all your traits, this is the one that's going to carry you the farthest. If you can have a nice season. Do I already have control of your development? I do. Okay, great. Um, Friends, I'm not going to waste our time. Go on up to Class A. I want to see how you can do with good competition uh, and see if you can keep working on your skill set. Um, <laughs> Alright my friends, I think it is time. Oh, let's just really quickly check and make sure that everyone here is where they're meant to be. Brilliant. Let us move on up to opening day. Remember when Roman Alvarado was going to be, like, our premium starting pitcher and was going to, like, carry us into the next millennium? Man. I mean, never, maybe never into the next millennium, at least until Base Wars becomes reality. But, still. Hmm. I mean, I'd love to win it all again, Mr. France. And thank you for your faith in me. Is always appreciated. Okay, I've got to say, by the way, I think they were one of our new teams, right? The Nashville Gold Rush. I'm pretty sure that that's one of our newer teams. Uh, I love the name, but it doesn't make any sense. And I hate names like that. Oh, here we go. 
They've apparently existed since 1871 and yet also never existed before. Cool. Cool story, bruh. That's because I haven't played any games yet. I think it's kind of what's messing stuff up. But anyway, it's not like Tennessee has gold, though, is the thing. Hmm. Anyway. Oh dear, one moment. <laughs> Pardon me. Oh goodness. I was about to try to meet my microphone. I couldn't get to the button quickly enough. Sorry about that. The Virginia Beach Black Aces is again another fantastic name that just doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, it's like the LA Lakers. Like there are no lakes in LA. They were named for Minnesota, which allegedly has many lakes. But regardless, it is time for some baseball. Uh, Mike Roberts has cleared waivers. I suspected he might. <clears throat> now, an important thing to think about, though, as we play through this season, is going to be the Ballad of Manny Pozo. And whether it's worthwhile trying to reach out to him and sign him long term, or just go arbitration for a couple seasons, um, Isaac White. My friend, you are the reason we won the NLCS last season. But my dude, I can't pay you $10 million to rot on the bench. Uh, I just can't afford that. Actually, I could afford that. I choose not to afford that. And we're not doing that well. Huh. Okay, it looks like we've had a couple of injuries here. Joe Burton's going to miss two weeks. Because our bullpen is a little bit light right now, I don't really feel confident in letting him just ride it out. So I'm going to go ahead and call up Dane Spellman. Oh my word, the bullpen has been fucked up. Okay. Uh, Greg Fleischman, you've kind of handled it before, so I'm going to make you the new closer. And then Dane Spellman's going to be middle relief. And Mr. Alvarado, I'm going to make you a setup guy. Done. Remember, we can't overreact to anything yet. We're very early on into the season, and goodbye Roman Alvarado. Um, I guess Jody Cox. Actually, I wonder, are there any decent free agent relievers still around that would provide a suitable boost? Um, Chris Hubbard. Didn't you pitch for me at one point or am I thinking of somebody else? I mean, you've been around, my friend. You have been around. Mike Andrade. We could bring back old friend Kevin Padden. Um, and I think we will. like someone with a bit more upside though I don't like the fact that Mike Andrade can't throw strikes consistently I think that makes him a very dodgy proposition in the bullpen I guess Dave McClure But I think Kevin Patton, I mean, better the double you know, right? Let's go ahead and offer him a deal. 
And I might quickly check the waiver wire too to see if there's anybody people are trying to screw. Hello, Josh Groff. Uh, I'm gonna claim you. If I get both of them, I'll just figure it out. Yeah, you know what, dude? Uh, fuck you. I'll take a better reliever for free. And you're gonna need middle relief. Three hundred homers for Ricky Peral, man. Good for him. I'm really happy for him. And I'm glad that he's had a good career even after we traded him. Um, I love the guy. He worked hard for us. I just couldn't afford that giant salary. And I'm glad that he's enjoying his time with Toronto. Um, he's got a borderline chance of making the Hall of Fame. We'll see what happens with him. I don't know seeing anybody from Pittsburgh on the right hand side there that is a little bit concerning uh, Bautista's losing his stuff that's not a great look Josh Estrada is throwing harder. That is a great look. And what about my beautiful boy? My right fielder extraordinaire. How did he do? How's he taking to A ball? Oh, A hasn't started yet. Okay. Let's check the statistics. And I'm not going to get too excited about anything here because it's still early on in the season. Um... Hmm. No, it's too early. It's too early to change anything up right now. Um, we'll just kind of sit tight and see where it gets us. Uh, we might lose Bobby Herrera, it looks like. Oh, no, he's just got knee inflammation. That's fine. I mean, it's not fine. I don't want him to be hurt. Our bigger problem seems to be our entire pitching staff is really badly struggling. And our defense looks really, really bad. But you can't trust statistics at the beginning of the season, right? You just can't. So I think we're just going to leave things as they are. And with another month of plate appearances, I'll have a little bit more data about who I can trust and who I can't. Um, I will say I'm a little concerned with how bad the defense looks. I mean, there's only 18 teams in the National League. Are we really at 36 teams for the entire majors? That seems like too many. So there's six, six, and six. Uh, so that's 18 and 18. Yeah, we have 36 teams in the major leagues, and yet we still only have, we really need a playoff change. Uh, but I don't care. I mean, I get in all the time because I'm awesome. Um, yeah, even defensive statistics, you know, I don't really trust defensive stats either this early on in the season. They really don't like Avila, but the rest of the team seems okay. It seems like Avila is single-handedly dragging it down, and I wonder if he's actually worse defensively, or this is just the game not knowing how to deal with him. Well, we will monitor the situation, of course, and then make some changes if they are warranted. But let's wait another month, give people a time to settle in, and let's actually see how things look. Uh, Joe Burton is still injured. That's fine. Rest up, buddy. So we're already getting our first whiner, Danny Durbin. You're not starting over Avila unless Avila is so helpless defensively that he's hurting the team. Uh, we can get Joe Burton back, which of course is a big yes please moment. Um, 
Virgil Hill, let's send you back to the miners to work on your craft a bit more. Uh, no, 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 no. I did not mean to hit that. You know I didn't. Demote. And then Burton goes back to being the closer. Fleischman goes back to being set up. Done. But we may need to start aggressively pursuing a new catcher. All right, a hey, shout out for McDonald. You love to see it. Um, I like how despite that he's injured, he's getting better, which is an interesting take. Um, Merrill is getting a tiny bit worse, but not too much worse. Um, Pozo seems to really be taking. His offense is improving, which you love to see. Uh, Clint Daly is becoming a really good shortstop, which is exciting news. Rusty Oliver is more or less about the same. Henry Urbina making a dramatic improvement is not something I would have predicted at the beginning of this season, but I certainly don't mind it. And Kevin Padden went to New York. That's fine. Friends, let us go ahead now. And first things first, how is Johnny doing in a ball? He is struggling a bit. So we're going to leave him there and just let him figure out his shit. So, team home screen. Offensively, we're getting some really positive performances from many people on this roster. Josh Lynch, perfect. This number is much less important than this number. You're getting on base at a high rate, and that's what matters for the entire offense to work. Manny Pozo is coming in with a quality offensive season so far. Um, if this is what Manny Pozo looks like, I will happily give him a long-term contract extension. Extension. He is also, as I predicted, a plus fielder at third base. Pozo is doing great. Avila has historically kind of gotten off to slow starts. Um, this is obviously not what we expect from our best hitter. We're just going to have to sit tight and let him work out his issues. Um, but they will be worked out. Um, I have absolute faith in Avila. He's a premium bat. He'll figure it out. He just needs a bit more time. Jeff Pierce has definitely contributed what we wanted him to contribute. A big scary bat in the middle of the lineup. Uh, he's already got 16 home runs, which is pretty bonkers. And he's just having a great season. Bermudez, he's bringing the power, but a guy with his level of contact only hitting 244 deeply concerns me. I'm sure he'll figure it out. I'm pretty confident about that. But if we take a look at his Babbitt, I bet it's like in the toilet. Yeah, he's just really struggling, and I think he'll start heating up here before too much longer. Rusty Oliver, again, another player who's not hitting as well as he should. 
Um, Bobby Herrera has had some injury pains, but has otherwise been a good contributor. Um, he hasn't been awful at second base, but he definitely hasn't been good. Um, so we're going to need to watch that as the season progresses. And Greg Merrill is basically the way he was last season, just with a tiny bit less power, but a bit more plate discipline. And Clint Daly has already proven to be a quality shortstop, and that's looking at the best move I've made all offseason, is calling him up and letting him be our everyday shortstop. So, the real question is, is the lineup going to be fine, or do we need to make a move? And I think the answer is the lineup will be fine. Um, the two players who are the most disappointing so far are Bermudez and Avila, and both of them have very long track records of playing very, very well. So, look at Avila. He's in a 1-for-22 slump. That can happen to anybody. Um, I think we're good with the lineup. The real question is defense. And we're still ranked very, very badly. And who is the issue? Okay, Bobby Harris is not a very good second baseman. That's not a big surprise to me. Josh Lynch is playing okay, but not brilliantly. Avila is turning things around a bit. Hmm. I am concerned. Here's why I'm concerned. It's because the entire pitching staff is pitching significantly worse than last season. But they're number one in fit. So there's a couple of explanations for that. One is Bobby Herrera playing second base. He's not a very good one. He's making a ton of mistakes. And that's obviously deeply problematic. The second possibility is that it's actually Avila. That Avila is losing a step defensively. He is 31. He's caught over a thousand games. So, I mean, it's not like he hasn't put in the time. And that it could be holding us back, too. Um, I mean, Bermudez wouldn't be awful at first base. He wouldn't be good, but he wouldn't be awful either. Bermudez to first, Avila to DH, but then who plays catcher is the issue. And that doesn't solve the Bobby Herrera problem. So the, the ultimate question is, who's hurting the defense more? Avila being behind the play or Herrera being at second base? I have a feeling it's the latter. I have a feeling that the Herrera experiment at second base is just not working out. I kind of like another month to just give him a chance to figure it out just so I can get a more accurate picture of the data. Because another important thing to remember is he's also been, you know, not his very best because of his injuries. So, here's the problem. Moving Avila off of catcher is going to create, is going to make us bump Bermudez, who is then going to make us bump somebody else. So I think resolving this situation at all, regardless of who goes where, is going to begin with trading Greg Merrill. So with that understanding, I think we wait until the All-Star break to make a move. We are in first place, um, so we certainly can't be... Or actually, we're in second place, sorry. We're very close to playoff position already. Um, I don't think waiting another few weeks is going to make a drastic difference. 
and it might give us more data with which to make a reasoned decision. Because I don't want to rush into this. Um, Greg Merrill is probably the odd man out. As useful as he was last season, um, he's basically stopping us from making the best possible lineup. And so until we figure that out, I'm not going to trade anybody. The hardest thing is going to be able to get a reasonably good offensive catcher who can still play defense well, because uh, those players don't grow on trees, and they often don't get traded. But we're going to figure that out um, once the All-Star break happens. We might also check our minor leagues and see if there is a reasonably good catcher, and that's not going to help matters. Why is injury time left? You don't know. It's four weeks, dude. I saw it. Okay, so who plays second base? Eric Pempak is certainly not the worst decision for someone to play second base, but I want to quickly check our minors and see if there is an intriguing young player who could fill in at second. I'm not going to play Baggett at second. That would be stupid. Jim Kelly is not a good enough hitter, quite frankly. <clears throat> so no matter what happens, I don't think we're going to keep Elvis Rome. I think he's just... Like, either Merrill's going to play first, or Herrera is going to play first, or Bermudez is going to play first, or maybe even Avila is going to play first. Someone's going to play first for the Pittsburgh Pirates over the next few seasons. It's not going to be Elvis Rome. So this would not be an awful time to trade him while he still has a decent amount of future value and see what we can get for that. Like perhaps a second baseman. So we're gonna try it. Um, I'll also look for catchers, but I wanna start on second base because I think it's gonna be an easier get. I think we have a little bit of an easier time getting a good second baseman versus a good, um, A good other dude. Eh. If all I cared about was defense, I'd take Ethan Hill, but he's an absolute zero with the bat. And I like my players to be a little bit more balanced. No, you're basically Bobby Herrera, but with you don't hit as well. No. Mm -mm. And now, nah, I don't want to take on them my salary for a player that's quite frankly not very good. Here. Like, we're getting to a point where, like, Bruce Ornelas is starting to look really, really good. Just because I need someone to play second. I'd love to get somebody who's actually a competent hitter, too, but I may be asking for too much. And because our pitching staff is struggling so much. I almost think I have to go defense whether I want to or not. Nope. You're not good enough at second, sadly. You're a very good defender and you're a good utility guy, but I think if I'm just going to go pure defense, which I think is where I'm leaning towards, I'm just going to go back to that one guy. <laughs> Your issue, Bruce, is that your range isn't very good. But other than that, I actually quite like you. 
I thought I decided to go with somebody else, though. Um... Look, if I go for Ornelas, I'm getting a really good overall player who doesn't make many mistakes. No, it wasn't Andy Gunville. Andy Gunville would be the best choice from an offensive perspective that I've seen, but only from an offensive perspective. Hector Ortega, you silly potato. You're not a second baseman. Yeah, OTP 23 request number one. Let me fucking filter this shit. Let me be able to filter the shop a player interface so that I don't get a bunch of players I don't care about. Uh, that would be great. I mean, I guess Ethan Hill is the best defender here. He'd be... Look, he'd be a decent um, utility guy if he doesn't work out in a primary role. So I think we're going to make this trade. Um, he's going to go to the Major League roster, but I don't think I'm going to let him start. Instead, I think Kingery is not a bad second base. He's not a very good hitter. I think Pempak is the best choice, even though none of them are great second basemen at the moment. I think Pempak is still superior to, um, to Herrera's defense. Um, so we're going to do that and then Ethan Hill is going to be primary backup wherever Pempack was okay so that's move number one is there a good catcher being available on the trading block Pete Carter is the name that's always out there. And look, I'm not saying that Pete couldn't be a good player. I'm just saying I don't know how much I'd trust him. And I'm damn sure not going to trade for a guy with a $20 million contract at a catcher if he's not one of the best of his position. So I think our best bet is going to be, um, it's just going to be to wait right now until the All-Star game and see where everyone is doing at All-Star break time and then we can make an informed decision about what to do about catcher. God damn it, Greg Merrill. Um, Jake LeMaster, I'm going to be honest with you, unless you're going to take a, oh, I forgot about that. Mm, can't afford you. Sorry, bro. But what the fuck happened to my payroll? Is Ethan Hill making, like, a lot of money? No, not really. Oh, hell no. Is now the time to extend Pozo? To try to buy out his arbitration years and save us some money in the long term? Or do we wait till the end of the season? I think we might wait. Okay. Yeah, friends, I... Ha. Oh my god, assholes. What the fuck, dudes? Quit getting into brawls and shit. I mean, good on you for taking out Jimmy Johnston. He's actually a really good player and makes the Braves a lot worse, but still. What do the Brewers have that's so great? 
Yeah, Mendoza's nothing. Don't insult me. All right, so let's start by checking out the All-Star roster, who from Pittsburgh made it. Tommy McDonald did. Jesus Moya did. Avila made it. Pozo made it. Pierce made it. Good times all around. Very good times. The best of times. Prospect roster, Johnny Cerulli made it, and Kirk Coates did. Very nice. All right. Look, if we're waiting until the All-Star break, we might as well just wait until the end of the month and see how people change. Well, we've got Vinny Salazar back. Uh, enjoy your time in AAA, my dude. No, he doesn't. Fine, I'll put you on the 40 man, but then I'm sending you to Triple A. Okay. Oh, I thought his name was Bombardier Ward. It's actually just Ward. That's less exciting. But okay. Player development report. Bautista's stuff is getting better. Good. Good. Uh, Jade Ring is actually one guy that's actually thinking about maybe calling up. Um, Jake Horowitz is improving. Some nice improvements across the board by some important players. I'm not seeing how the big man's doing, though. How are you doing, big man? Mr. Cerulli. You're still struggling, and you're still super young, so I'm not going to rush you. I'm going to let you figure out your shit, and we'll go from there. Okay. So let's look at the statistical record of our team. And we're looking pretty good except for Merrill. <clears throat> 11 homers, but only hitting 221. You better be getting on like a 370 clip, and you're not. Yeah, you're losing contact. Um, you didn't have that much to begin with, but you're losing it. So you're already going to make one decision for me very, very easy, which is, can we trade Greg Merrill without hurting the team? The answer to that is a very clear yes. So... The rotation's doing great. Bullpen, not so much. Our defense still looks absolutely dog shit. So let me fix the bullpen first. Uh, Greg Fleischman, you're now a middle reliever. You are no longer worthy of the setup role. Instead... I guess Mike Turhar can be our new middle relief dude. Our new setup dude. I didn't notice, I don't really care who pitches in the seventh as long as it's somebody who's pitched well. Uh, Greg, my boy, you've attracted a case of gopheritis where everything you're throwing is getting hit really hard. You may just be done as a reliever. Um, I wonder if there is, 
Any intriguing relievers in free agency? Hi, Joe Ralston. Would you like to become a Pittsburgh Pirate? Holy shit, no way, dude. He wants $11 million. That ain't happening. Eh, eh. Alex Duran, on the other hand, might be a very interesting... Man, everybody else is offering a lot of money, though. I'd rather offer no money. Um, so. I think first things first, I'm going to trade Greg Fleischman. I'm going to try to trade him for a catcher if there's one available. Kill two birds with one stone, make some other moves. But for right now, uh, I just want to see what's available to me. Uh, no. Thanks, though, but no. Nope. Nope. Alright, we're going to start from the bottom and work our way up. So, Bill Kearney. Pretty decent defensive catcher. Is he that much better than Avila? He's at least better at throwing out base runners, I guess. Okay discipline. Okay gap power. Really bad contact. That might be a pass. Uh, Manny Rodarte. Yeah. Yeah. Like Stockhouse isn't terrible, but we're not what we're not finding is you're not finding anyone who either wows us defensively or wows us offensively. Um Mike Stockhouse is a perfectly serviceable catcher, and he's also not very good at the same time. I either need... I, I need to see a little bit more variance. I need to see something that shows me... Yes, this is the kind of catcher that you want. Nope. 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 Uh-uh. No, you actually suck, Johnny Bashford. Chris Hale. Nope. Okay, this is the first guy I'm looking at here that seems to me he could be a good choice to be a starting catcher. Uh, I'm going to keep looking, but so far, Eugenier Shuknecht is looking like the best choice. Mike Perdone, meh. Mike Ramirez, that's a major net, meh. That is perhaps maximum, meh. Um, you're too old. Like, you'd be like a good one year stopgap, but I'd rather have a longer term solution. Nope. Nope. All right, where'd that one guy go? It was Mr. Guy whose name I can't say. Yeah, guys, I think he's our choice. Um, he's not perfect offensively, but he offers us an awful lot defensively. And he's in the midst of a pretty solid year, so I'm betting that he'll be a good acquisition. Um, I'd also like if you're if you would be so in, so kind uh, a prospect, maybe of a relief variety like one Dave Hershey. No, you won't give me Hershey. He's not actually a reliever. He is a starter. I could probably get like a Tony Rojas though. I doubt you'd fight me about that. Um, no, you can't play the position at all. 
Otherwise, I'd very strongly consider that. I also won't mind trading for Edgardo Sanchez if I can get him too. Nah, if he's not going to want to do it right away, then I don't see too much of a fuss involved. Actually, do you know what? Let me put a pin in this, and let me try to trade Merrill and Fleischman. And see if that actually gets me uh, a truly exceptional catcher. I did not think of that. No, I actually saw Elvis Room. Um, but we'll figure it out. No, actually, I don't wish we had Elvis Rome. Never mind, ignore me. Uh, where are you, Meryl? Here you are. Am I getting better choices? I'm mean, getting Chris Taylor, who's like the ultimate version of He's like the ultimate version of Andre Sevilla, a guy who will never throw anybody out, but such a damn good catcher with a pretty good bat, actually. Um, but you play for the Phillies, and I don't want to make the Phillies better, but I like the cut of your jib. I do like the cut of your jib. I could still get that one guy, I think. Am I going to trade with the Phillies just to get a player of that caliber? Chris Taylor is damn good, guys. He's... And I know his raw defensive rating doesn't look amazing, but it's just the fact he doesn't throw out base runners that well. Could I get TJ Hansen off you? And maybe... Maybe Bulshum? Bushum? Okay. Uh, I'm gonna keep going if I can get more. I keep treating the Phillies like they're in my division. They're not in my division. Uh, no. Is this a good enough return for Fleischman and Merrill? Um, I think it is. You know what? Done. Okay. So, first things first. Taylor on the roster. <clears throat> Avila to DH and Bermudez to first base. Um, actually, it's 21. What would Avila's range be at first base? One. Okay. As bad as Bermudez would be at first base, um... There's no question that Avila would be much worse. <clears throat> Avila may never win a, D uh, a Silver Slugger again, by the way, because I don't think we assign. I don't think we do a Silver Slugger for designated hitter. Um, but I'm I'm okay with that as long as it's a really great hitter. Um, going forward, so okay, so. Avila first, and Chris Taylor is going to slot right in as our everyday catcher. I'm just going to copy and paste this over. And friends, we will see how this goes. Um, I kind of wish I kept Rome now, but I still think Bermudez offers us a significant upgrade. Um, and I'm going to give him a chance to really show what he can do. 
I am a little concerned that Avila's value dropped by so much, but it's because a, a fantastic hitting catcher versus a fantastic hitting DH. Uh, an important benefit might be getting him to play every single day, and that might be another important thing to consider. So I think that's good enough for right now. Uh, my friends, ooh, I'd like you a lot. I'd like you even more. Hmm. I will offer you the maximum. Come sign with the Pittsburgh Pirates. Promise if he doesn't sign, uh, I'm sure I'm not going to get my number two choice, so we'll have to figure that out. Okay, so let's talk coaches. First of all, all the minor league guys are going to stay. Uh, you don't have the right to leave me ever. For extension, sure. I love how the ones who want me to talk to them personally actually don't want that much more money or even less money. Okay, so Thane Clark. Thane Clark has done a pretty great job of developing his pitching staff. I'm not going to lie about that whatsoever. Um, he's got really good relationships with all of our best pitchers. I think this is reasonable. I think it's reasonable to give him a contract extension and see how he can take us going forward. Done. I think that's it. Okay. Next step. We need a new reliever to replace what's-his-face, and I think that reliever is going to be Jody Cox. So you're going to be middle relief and done. I'm really curious to see what's going to happen with Taylor as our catcher versus the other guy, Avila. Now, an important fact is we're still going to get run on all the time. I still don't think stolen bases are that big a part of the game in 2046. I don't think it's going to hurt us that much. And having a good all-around catcher is going to vastly outweigh the fact, hey, he's even a local guy, uh, is going to outweigh the fact that he's not very good at throwing out base runners. Uh, but we'll see, though. We shall see, my friends. Oh, how we shall see. It's not fair to ask about the most overpaid DH in the major leagues. Um, hey, we got the guy. Uh, instantly, I want you shortlisted. I have very big plans for you, my friend. Very, very big plans. Okay, we get Bobby Herrera back. Um, Mr. Herrera? Oh, dear. Oh, my God, Lynch. Really? Fine. Um. Hmm. Will you present a very awkward conversation, Mr. Herrera? You can't play the outfield, can you? You can play it really badly. Yeah, man. I don't know where to play you anymore. Like, I mean, it's not like Penpec is anything fantastic with the bat, but he's at least really good with the glove. Um, I'm not going to trade Bermudez. So I think I'm instead going to send you to rehab, and let's see where we are in 20 days. Um... I do need a new, um, dude, if you could play any position with any level of skill, I might consider calling you up at some point. I need a new center fielder, though. That is my number one concern, is someone who can handle center without embarrassing themselves. Well, I guess there's somebody who can sort of handle center, because I can always just bump Chris Neff into starting at center. So I really just need a good all-around outfielder who has the athleticism to cover all three positions. 
And you know what? I think Horowitz is a fair choice. Um, he wouldn't be a brilliant center fielder, but I think he'd be good enough. So we're going to right quick. Nap is going to be here. Uh, he's clearly not going to be leading off, though. That would be silly. Uh, who is going to be leading off? Actually. Rusty Oliver. No. I'm not saying Rusty Oliver can't lead off. I'm saying that he won't lead off. Um... I guess Pozo... No, Pozo's definitely going to bat second. He's too good a power hitter to be batting at the top of the lineup. Uh, I guess we'll go with Oliver for now. And then everyone else gets bumped up. And we're going to do... Oh, sorry. And then Horowitz, you're going to back up in center. And at the corners. You know, Isaac White can't play center, can he? He cannot. Okay. I feel really bad for Isaac White because there's just hardly any chance that I'm ever going to promote him to playing every day unless things go really badly wrong, which they might. Um, I'm not saying he'll never get to play, but it's highly unlikely that he'll get to play. Um, something I was considering was actually trading Rusty Oliver because my friends, he has not been great this season or last season. On the flip side though, he is a captain and I don't think I have another one. Or do I have Caleb Bautista? Okay. I mean, I really don't know how to think about this one. I really don't know if trading Rusty Oliver is a great solution to any problem. Like, okay, so why am I saying trade Rusty Oliver? Um, well, number one, to get his salary off the books. His salary next season is going to be quite extensive. Um... No, that wouldn't help me play Bobby Herrera. I would need to get rid of an infielder to play. Oh, because then I could move Bermudez out to right field again. Because uh, he's not that bad as an outfielder. He's about as good as Oliver. So the question becomes, is Herrera playing first, which I think he could handle quite well, and Bermudez in right field better than Oliver in right field and Bermudez at first base. And Herrera figuring his shit out. Like, Oliver hasn't been a good hitter the last... As, hasn't been as good a hitter this season as he's been in the past. But I think anyone we trade him to, that could really bite us in the ass. So I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait on what to do with him. Yeah, I don't want your crappy second baseman, but thanks, though. I'm going to try to wait as long as I possibly can before deciding what to do with, uh, with Herrera. Look at all these wonderful players that I won't get anywhere near. Like, I would go, I would do not a literal backflip, but a partial backflip to get a player of Javon Williams' caliber. He ain't going to be there when I pick. And as I predicted, he is not. All right. Now, I could use a top-quality relief pitcher, believe it or not. We've actually struggled a little bit to have top tier relief pitchers um because we keep cycling through them so quick so quickly so there is some attraction to a guy like a Vinny Alvara except for the fact he can't throw strikes which is problematic Collins is a bit more polished
like any of these guys would be good, but let's also look at Chris Sevison. Um I mean his numbers in high school are quite frankly ridiculous. And he's got the potential to be a top tier bat at either of the corner positions. I'd probably place him at first, let's be honest here. Um, but I like what I see. And I can probably get a good reliever later on in the draft. Oh, I do want to look at Hank Hess. Oh, you really intrigue me, Hess. You're a good defender. You play multiple positions. You're even a really good center fielder. And center field is a position I really badly lack at. So you know what? Hank, I'm going to draft you. Okay, Rob Collins is still around. We're going to grab him. Now let's take ourselves a quick look and find out, are there any offensive megastars? I don't know if I'd call Luis Gonzalez an offensive megastar, but he's got enough potential. Oh, we're looking at batting ratings, not batting potential. My bad. Um, hi, Nate Sanders. Oh, but Jim Hughes could be a mega bat. So could Luis Gonzalez, quite frankly. These are all amazing choices. Uh, I'm going to draft Luis Gonzalez, though. Um, Nate Sanders is still around. I'm going to grab him, too. And I'll also grab Jim Hughes. Done. I think other people are just missing the incredible talent level of some of these players. I think they're going to regret it. And I'll draft Keith Hines, I guess. Are you feeling really good defensively? You're not terrible. Eddie, welcome to the Pirates. Hoke wouldn't be awful. So you you get nothing. And then... Look, there's enough interesting players. I think I'm just going to keep looking to draft. Uh, I'm not going to take a guy like Dustin Boyce. I might take a guy like Brad Gordon, though. Uh, Gordon is not far off from being... A good reliever and a couple of big talent changes might make a big difference. Um, I'm going to draft Dusty Boys just because it doesn't hurt to do it. I mean, I'm losing a 10th round pick. Oh no. Yeah, you're not a very good shortstop. You'd be a good third baseman though. Yeah, I'm not feeling anybody else here. Go ahead and complete the draft. Guys, we got some killer bats in this draft. Uh, and I'm really excited about that. Also, I don't wish to alarm you, but Hank has might have a very quick path to the major leagues, depending on how he does in the high minors. Um... Oh, first of all, let me make sure I shortlist him. And Collins. There you go. Uh, meet his demand. Easy peasy. Meet his demand. Uh, 
Like, I guess it'll, there's a harm. No, Jim Houston never going to be a good pitcher. Uh, you'd have to be pretty stupid to think he would be. Bro, I am not spending $9 million on a mediocre reliever. You can happily go to school and figure out your shit. Um, nope. I can't give up Chris enough right now. I need... I need a good center fielder until what's-his-face is healthy again. A trade proposal. You're offering me a mediocre pitcher who's injured. I am not interested. You go away now. Okay, very, very important. Luis Gonzalez, you're never pitching a day in my system. Jim Hughes, never pitching a day in my system. Nate Sanders, wait for it. Never pitching a day in my system. Oh damn, he's also a center fielder. That's a very nice surprise, uh, and I'm very happy about all of those. Like, I might bump you to center field, in all honesty, because I think that's where your future of this team is going to be. But you're also a pretty good defender, so I don't mind you just bouncing around the diamond while you learn how to hit. Um, but I think your future is for the Pirates is going to be at center field. We got a really good offensive draft class, my friends. Very, very good indeed. Okay. It's Herrera decision time. So, here's the big question. Rusty Oliver has been really good for a really long time and it continues to be good. I have very little complaints with Mr. Oliver other than his ridiculous arbitration demands, but whatever. What is our best scenario here? Is it Herrera comes back and plays second base, even though he's not very good at it? He's not awful at it, though. Like, I'm definitely not going to... I'm not going to keep Pen Pack at the expense of Herrera. That would be stupid as shit. Uh, Pen Pack's not that special. He's merely a pretty decent defender who isn't a total waste with the bat. Yeah, man, I can't see doing that. And I'm not going to trade Oliver yet, but I might trade him in the offseason. Um, okay, that was an easier decision than I thought it might be. Yeah, I'll designate you for assignment. And then Herrera comes back. And Herrera comes back. Herrera, I'm going to have you bat lead off in the interim. And then just let Oliver bat sixth. I think he'd be happier there anyway. How has our defense looked, by the way, since the move... We still have really bad defensive efficiency, but it's not like Avila's record disappears um, at catcher, so we really won't notice a big jump until later on, I think. Maybe even next season. I'm just curious if we're doing better now. I think I'm okay with my bullpen. I mean, I don't love it, but I also don't know who I would necessarily get rid of besides Gall. Hmm. 
But the thing is, I don't want to trade Durbin because I like having a really reliable backup catcher while we break in Chris Taylor. Although Durbin is going to be going at the end of the season anyway. You know what? Let's do it. Let's make this trade. And then, so I'm going to call up uh, Tim Martin. Actually, I guess I'm not calling up Tim Martin. Is he hurt? He is hurt. Well, Jaden Ring, uh, welcome to the big leagues. I didn't expect to call you up so soon, but here we are. And then I need to replace my reliever. Um, Cox is actually pitching quite well. Like, who do I send down to satisfy our new relief dude? I guess Cox. No, actually, that would be stupid. Um, Cox has been performing at a high level. Spellman hasn't. So, Cox, you get to come back. And both of you are going to be middle relievers. Done. Oh, whoops. I also need to set up Ring as our backup catcher. Okay, done. Uh, absolutely not. I don't care how good Ron Black or John Black is, absolutely not. Mm -mm. Tim Kern is a really good pitcher. I'm not disputing that, but I can't lose Chris Neff. Like, if Wolf comes back and he's amazing, then I have no problems whatsoever, but I can't trade Neff until that's official. And no, I'm not going to give you a better version of the pitcher you're trying to sell me. Just don't be silly. Don't be silly. No, you're not getting Luis Montour. I don't care how decent your start is. My rotation is fine. Like, okay, I'll acknowledge that Robert Tiago is having a bit of a rough season. Um, looks like his home run rate's a bit higher, but he's still a productive starter. And if I didn't want to keep Tiago, then I would be finding somebody else. That I've already got, like Montour, for instance. Uh, or that new guy. Uh, no. Friends, is there anyone else who want to trade now? Isaac's White's demands have come down significantly, but Pozo's have gone up a lot. And Pozo doesn't want a long-term contract. He just wants a one-year contract, which is fine, I guess. Um, Rusty Oliver and Bermudez are the really big issues here. Like, I'm going to be real with you. We're probably not keeping Bermudez unless we win the World Series again. And even then, I'm probably not keeping Bermudez. Um, I just think there's... Better choices out there, potentially. Oliver, how much would I need to do to get you to sign longer term? Man, you really don't want very much money, do you? And I think you'll be worth that in one way or another. Plus, it gives me cost certainty. Look, give me a team option, and I think this will work. I think this will work out for us. I, I like this decision. I'm making it done. 
that's actually going to save me a ton of money on the back end and arbitration costs. So I'm happy about that. Bermudas, I'll talk to you in the off season, and we'll see if we can't come to some sort of arrangement that makes us both happy. I also want to trade. Um, I'm not spending fourteen million for any closer. Um, you know how I feel about that. So Burton, you can enjoy your life on a different team, but you're not playing for me next season. Uh, I don't roll that way. I'm going to save my money to pay my position players, not to pay a reliever. Let's go. Uh, I would actually trade Burton if I weren't like in a position to make the playoffs again. Otherwise, I'd very strongly consider it. Lynch is the guy saying, I don't know why I tried to call him Wolf earlier. That's not his name at all. Poor Tim Martin. He had a real chance to be the backup catcher, and then he got hurt at the wrong time. Life is like that sometimes. Yeah, Pen Pack, you can go to the minors. I don't dislike you. I just don't want you. I mean, you did good filling in for the injured Herrera, but you just weren't a very good player overall. Okay, we locked up Rusty Oliver, and I'm pretty happy with that deal. And yes, I completely acknowledge the fact that he's only been worth about three wins the last couple seasons. But remember, eight million per win per war is considered like a really good return on investment. And he's just gonna barely make six or seven or eight figures rather uh, starting next season. So I think this is a really good move. Um, I think he's always going to be an important piece of our team. He's our captain. You've got to keep people like that, in my opinion. How is Chris D'Andrea doing these days? Oh, he's still in the minors? Remember when he won a batting title? I remember that. Man. Look how the mighty have fallen. Oliver's uh, durability is also off the charts. And so that's another big reason why I was comfortable giving him a long-term extension. Not like Caleb Bautista, who just can't stay healthy for whatever reason. Um, I'm going to put you there. So, who my friends takes up his mantle. I think it's going to be Montour because I'd like Gruttencord to get a little bit more experience in AAA. Uh, plus Montour has already pitched in the big leagues and so I think he's a good fit to, to come in and help us pitch the rest of the season. He's not out for the season. Oh, no, he is out for the season. He won't be back for the, in time for the playoffs. That's kind of cringe. That's kind of cringe, my dude. We do get Josh Lynch back, though, which is exciting news. Uh, Jay Korowitz, back to the minors for you. Josh Lynch, welcome back. You're going to cost me a pretty penny, aren't you? my young friend, but that's okay because elite players deserve elite salaries. And then that was gonna go there and there. <clears throat> um, man, Herrera can probably handle leading off along with Pozo hitting second. Pozo is actually cooling off a little bit. Uh, but Josh Lynch is, is the man at lead off. So I think we're going to do 
Lynch leading off, Herrera hitting second, Pozo hitting seventh, and then Taylor and Daly. Um, oh, Bermudez is hitting, is slugging in almost a 600 clip. Um, that'll play. And the reason I'm bumping Pozo is because I think Pozo's uh, power is would be better suited a bit lower in the lineup. Um, and we're going to see what happens with him. He's only stolen one base, but that's frankly one more than he stole. So look, it's going to be fine. Um, given his current statistical record... Manny Pozo steals one and only one base each season, except for his rookie season. He needed some time. I get it. Um, and I think Rick has like 600 stolen bases, so he just has to play majors for 600 years, and he'll be the, the stolen base champion. It'll be great. Um, uh, hey, though. Um, I, am, I am not at all upset with what he has provided to this to this franchise. I really hope we can win the division. Um, and we're obviously in a good position to do just that. But I really like that bye week. Um, I really think that bye week could be really important. Maybe there's a chance we could get um, Caleb Bautista back in time for uh, the NLCS if we get that far. Uh, that would be delightful. Hey, look at Lynch coming back. Boom. Very nice. Jake, you haven't gotten an offer because, quite frankly, you want too much money. I would actually really strongly consider extending you, um, especially if I'm going to lose... What's his face? Uh, first thing first, Virgil Hill... Get your ass on the Major League roster. Beyond that, I mean, I guess this could be like an attempt for William Andrade to prove that he can handle a few innings here and there, but I don't really feel like that's a necessity. Um, I will call up Jesus Ortiz and let him get some reps in as, say, our number one pinch hitter. But right now, oh dang, Ooh. I did something to my toe. Um, but yeah, right now, I don't really feel um, I don't really feel like there's any big position player. I do want Virgil Hill pitching though, um, and I want him to be used more often. Uh, Bobby Sanier, can we not have you pitch in high leverage, please? Thank you. Our bullpen is still not great. Um, it seems like my decades of cheapness are finally starting to bite me on the ass. Uh, Jakey boy. Do I resign you? Or do I... No, I'm going to wait till the offseason, and then I'll decide what to do with you. Jared Gall's been kind of bad the entire time I've had him. I think I just need to get over him and just dispose of him. Wow, that sounded dark. I'm not going to take him out back and shoot him. I'm just going to make him not play for me. Oh, motherfucker. Josh, my boy, I'm getting really tired of that. You need to stop. Stop getting injured. You're just not allowed anymore. Um... Steve Carraro would not be a bad selection to fill in as a backup outfielder. And then Chris Knapp gets to be center fielder again. Carraro there. Carraro there. Um, and then I think Carrera leads off and we're going back to Pozo hitting second. And everyone else moving up. We have three different players with the first name of C. Uh, I would say we call ourselves the Killer C's, but that wouldn't make very much sense because the players that begin with C are not all that important. I mean, Chris Taylor is pretty important. 
Uh, he has really struggled with us, though. Hmm. I gotta hope he can maybe figure it out. Man, that is some bullshit. I mean, I definitely wouldn't want anyone to have a severely strained hip muscle. Um, that's definitely been... Like, I've obviously injured myself from time to time. And it hasn't been great. Oh no! Pittsburgh rookie institution Yoel Hernandez finally retired. Uh, hey, Joey D'Onofrio. Would you like to be in a new job? No, it looks like I just have to hire somebody. That's fine. That's fine. Austin Bryce, would you like to be? No, fuck you, Austin Bryce. Tim Manon back. I'd prefer you instead. Excellent. That's one less thing to worry about in the offseason. Yeah, I didn't want that guy. He sucked. I wasn't going to pay him $4 million to just be a worthless jerk. Um, we did lose Derek Risden and the manager, Scott Main. Okay. Oh, there was a player that retired. I see. Okay. Um, Mike Hill. I think you've earned a promotion. Well, it's not really a promotion. It's, it's more of a side move. Um... Give me Garrett Gunnels. I demand Garrett Gunnels. He is not wanting to be a coach. I will move heaven and earth to get Garrett Gunnels to be on my team. He he needs to be here forever. I should find Mike Sheehan. I wonder if Mike Sheehan is coaching. That'd be funny. Oh, that's, uh, gee, you think I know how to spend my own, spell my own guy's name. Come on, Garrett, go into coaching. Go into coaching. Sigh. I'm just, like, imagining, um, like, camping out at his house. And be like, hey Garrett, how about coaching? Hey Garrett, how about coaching? Hey Garrett, how about coaching? Just sitting like in his front porch. Maybe you get like that that one scene from uh, fuck, I can't remember the name of the movie. The one with John Cusack where he's holding the the stereo over his head. Uh, is that High Fidelity? Maybe I haven't seen that movie in like two decades. But anyway. Yes, something like that where we're just like desperately trying to get Garrett Gunnels to to get the job done and uh, and join us forever and ever. Nice. Burn, baby, burn, lost in inferno. Oh my god, Herrera, really? Alright, friends, we're trading Herrera in the offseason. He just gets hurt too damn much. I don't care how good he is. He's had four different hamstring injuries this off this season, and it's getting real freaking old. Um... Yeah, I don't know what your problem is, Herrera, but you need to freaking quit it. 
Ag. You know what, Butch James? To at least offer a modicum of offensive competency, I would like you to be my second baseman for the rest of the season. I know you're not very good at it, but I don't really have a choice right now. I mean, you're error prone, but other than that, you're not like the worst choice ever. Yeah, Herrera, you just made a glass. I think I need to trade you in the offseason for the best return I can possibly get. Uh, I'd like to win an even 100 games. And I did. Great. Uh, so, playoff roster time. So here's the thing. I don't have a second baseman. Unless I play... Uh, what's his face? Ethan Hill. Because I can't add what's-his-face to the roster. It is not a possible thing to do. Which is a bit disappointing. Jared Gall, you're kind of a bad pitcher this season. I don't mind you not being on the postseason roster. Um... Let's go ahead and put Jim Kelly on the roster just because I'm going to need a backup. And then I guess Ethan Hill gets a start at second base, which is frankly disgusting. But it is what it is. Uh, here, sure, Kelly, you can do that. And I guess Jesus Ortiz, you can figure out center field. It'll, it'll be fine. Um... Yeah, I am not enamored with any of my choices at the top of the lineup. I guess it's back to Rusty Oliver leading off, because I don't trust anyone else. Uh, copy, copy, paste, paste. Okay, let's set the rotation. Uh, we're only going to do a four-man rotation. And Jesus Moya is not only not left off, he's going to be the number three starter. Do you know what? Actually, he's going to be the number two starter. I trust him more than Diago right now. You're going to do emergency starting long relief. All right, my friends. Uh, let us hope that this first round of the playoffs goes swimmingly. Go Mets. I don't want to face the fucking Phillies again. I'm tired of the Phillies. Always the damn Phillies. Then again, I kind of hope they do win, so I can destroy my defeated, my my hated rivals, perhaps. Uh they lost. However, sucks to be you. It is time for us to face the Nine Mets. And nice. Very nice. Eh, you can't win them all. Okay. This needs to stop. All right, my friends, um, you're not making bad choices. I mean, Giles was a bad pitcher, but I can't really outmanage that. Uh, friends, I think it is time to go ahead and play our first game today. Let's go. Oh, my DH is better than yours. Uh, you're just going to have to accept that, though. Uh, yeah, this is not the mega lineup I was hoping for when we started this season, but that's okay. Oops. Sorry. Um, okay, Tommy, go right after this jerk face. 
Remember that no hitter you did in the playoffs last year? How about you do that again? Nice work, Nav. You don't even realize that Tommy McDonald had won a gold glove. That's cool. That's very cool. Literally no one else on my defense has ever won one, but... Nice work, Bermudez. Okay. Dufinu is quite a scary pitcher. He throws really, really hard with really good control. Um, so I'm going to need you to do me a favor, Oliver. I'm going to need you to play well. <clears throat> As a personal favor to me, play well, please. Nice work. Easy double. I guess all I had to do was ask. Manny, if you would be so kind. That was literally the worst place to have hit that ball. Avila, you get to focus on hitting year-round now. Uh, that's an out. Come on, Pierce. Excellent. You have pierced this game open with a with our first run. Very nice indeed. Get him, Bermudez. Or take a walk. Oh, bullshit that. Mm, I don't agree with that at all. Where's that? Where's my widget? my favorite widget of all time. Oh, you know what? I have to turn off the... Oh, no, I don't. Okay. Where is my widget, damn it? Show me the widget. Mm. That is not a strike. That's some fucking bullshit. That was not a strike. How much you got riding on the game, ump? Coo I thought it was almost kookier. That's an amazing name. I fully approve of that. And the no-hitter is over. So, good job, Tommy. Now you can just focus on being an amazing pitcher the rest of the time. No pressure, guys. No pressure. All right, Chris. Um, let's see how you can do here. You have struck out. Uh, I gotta say I don't care for that. I don't care for all this weak ass contact. Come on guys, you can do better than that. Hit ball good. There we go. Oh dear, Ethan Hill really is a terrible hitter, isn't he? Let's just try to wear him out. Because, I mean, I don't really trust you to hit it. That's barely a strike, my guy. I guess I gotta tell you to hit, um, and you did badly. But hey, you made him throw pitches, and that is a good thing. Mm. 
Really? Come on, dude. How the hell do you inside out a pitch at 99 miles an hour like it's nothing? That's disgusting. No, you don't, McDonald. Don't be losing your shit right now. I need you to be at your very best, and right now you're pitching kind of trash, my guy. And no double play. Uh, yeah, I have no intentions of pitching to this chuckle fuck. He is really scary. Uh, pitch around him. If you get him out, great. If you don't, I'd rather load the bases to face Danilo if he's really struggling. Or you can strike him out. That works too. All right, so McDonald's going to be on a very short leash today. He is not pitching his very best. Whereas the Met starter, apart from a couple of minor mistakes, has actually pitched really, really well. And can also teleport, which is, it seems unfair, right? That seems pretty unfair. Um, let's just take some pitches right now. And again. Yeah, he's just... Pounding the strike zone. I'm wasting my time. Hey, good work, Pozo. Avila, I need you to heat the fuck up right now. I want to see this baseball go a very long way. And be fair, that's my own fault. I didn't say as an out. I should have been more specific. Booyah! That's the good shit, Pierce. That's the very good shit. That is what I acquired you for. Well done, my friend. Well done indeed. Are we going to go back to back? Nice. Oh, look at that shit. Ethan Kiefer comes back. So I'm going to try a bit of a gamble here. Mm. No, I don't think I need to pull McDonald yet. If he starts to struggle really badly, I will. You're going to be in a pretty short leash today, my friend, uh, because I'd rather you be fresh and at your best uh, in the NLCS should we win today. Look at Pozo, making that look easy. Pozo, you're no Bozo. Nice work, Oliver. Boom, boom, boom. Especially if we can put another run or two on the board, I'm definitely going to try to be really... Look at that back control. Good job, Daly. Man, you are on fucking fire this postseason, and I love to see it. You know, for all the moves I made this season, Daly at shortstop is probably the best one I made. That one, not so much. Um... I think that really just made us a better team. I'll be curious to see how things go in the future with Avila not playing catcher anymore. If he starts hitting worse, because that's how some players are, by the way. When they become DHs, um, they just don't play as well because they don't feel as focused. Um, my dude, that was a strike. You know what? I will, I will own that. That was striking 10 population us. Wait, where'd you go? Oh, wow, Oliver. That was freaking hardcore, my dude. Way to go. That was clutch as shit. And your arm's not even that good. 
So I'm very excited about that. It tells me we have to keep trying it, though. Yeah, McDonald might be gassed. Um, he is just getting hit pretty hard. And while I know I do have a four-run lead, that doesn't mean I'm going to piss it away. So I think we're going to try to get out Winchester here, and I'm going to start warming somebody up next inning. McDonald's doesn't have his best shit today. He is not pitching his very best. Robbie Wolf, didn't you used to play for me? Maybe? No, I don't think you did. I think I'm thinking of someone else. No, wait a minute. Yeah, you did play for me. I traded you. Boy, that did that trade end up working out? Not so much. Well, poop. Oh, well. I mean, it's good to see you, mate, but I do feel a little bit sad that you don't play for me anymore. Okay, great. Nice work, Tommy. Go hit the showers. You are not pitching in the next inning. Bullpen. I don't really have a great long reliever, to be honest with you. Um, so I think we are going to go and warm up Montour. Try to get him to pitch a couple of innings, maybe even three innings. Um, and if things start to get a lot closer, then we'll bring in someone else. Uh, I should probably warm up a second person, though, just in case. Um, probably Jody Cox. I'm going to warm you up, too. Nice work, Avila. Come on, give me another big-time swing, Mr. Pierce. Or take a walk. Can I get a big time swing from you again, Mr. Bermudez? Sergio, if I may be so familiar. Nice placement. Bases are loaded, one out. And Chris Taylor is up. Um This feels like a really big moment. feels like a really big moment um options i'm trying to remember how you actually do because that's how you warm somebody up how do i bring in a pinch hitter i'm not saying i don't trust chris taylor but this is possibly the biggest at bat of the game um i think i have to go into game options maybe here we go pick substitutions there you go uh, give me Jesus Ortiz. And then we'll bring in Jaden Ring to... Game action. There we go. All right, my friend, I believe in you. Hit this ball really far. That was not very far, but it still scored a run. Uh, absolutely not. Stay put, my friend. I'm not even going to push that one. That was clutch, my guy. Very clutch. Clint Daly? Um, go for it. And he got hit. Yowie. But another run. Uh, I'll take it. Chris Knopf, I don't have a good choice to replace you in center right now. And we've already got six runs, so I'm just going to let you do your thing. And draw a walk. Okay. Damn, this game's kind of getting out of hand, isn't it? And that's going to play, too. Um, go for it, Neff. I believe in you. I think he's out. Yeah, oh well. Rusty, get her done. Oh, nice. Yeah, 
Yeah, guys, we are just dominating this game all of a sudden. I think I'm just going to send the rest of this game, quite frankly. Um, just so that the video doesn't get too long. Uh, don't worry, friends. I will bring in Jaden Ring to catch the rest of the game. Yes, and you will be the catcher. And then I'm going to go ahead and do entire game because we're not going to lose this game. Uh, go ahead and bring in Montour, though, because otherwise I have the feeling that the game's going to try to keep McDonald in. And then I'm going to say entire game. Yep. Beautiful. Mwah. Good work, my friends. Very good work. Montour gave us three quality innings, thus helping the rest of the bullpen recover for the NLCS. Brilliantly done, my friends. Brilliantly done. Man, that Jesus Ortiz move really worked out, didn't it? I certainly wouldn't have predicted that, but it really worked out. I'm very happy about that. That pinch hitting for my catcher ended up getting us a run. Uh, we're facing the Padres, okay. With Big Man Moya as my number one starter, let's go. And nicely done. It did take extra innings, but all that matters at the end of the day is that we won the game. How is Moya doing? He's got a lot of pressure put on him as our number two starter. Uh, I will take that every day of the week. And if Burton had been a better closer, it wouldn't have been an issue. He shouldn't have been in as long as he was, but whatever. Uh, yeah, Moya... No complaints. If you just did that every single star, I think we'd be very, very happy with you. A second victory, thanks to Mr. Diago. Although we did win eight to six, so I don't think Diago was all that great, and he wasn't. He was just good enough to win. And you know what? That's maybe the most important stat, right? Being just good enough to win. And we win again. We got a big game out of Mike Giles. You love to see that. Um, very efficient. He played the baseball well, my friends. And we have big game Tommy McDonald. Uh, in fact, before we do anything else, there we go. I'm sure that will make you even more... Oh, who won the uh, Division Series MVP? Rusty Oliver? Totally deserved it. Totally deserved it. Look, I'm not saying it's because I gave him a nickname, but I'm saying it's because I gave him a nickname. Uh, Tommy McDonald, you magnificent bastard. You never fail to get us what we need. How sweet it is. Didn't I play the Red Sox last year too? Is this the second year in a row I'm facing the Red Sox in the World Series? That seems right. Let me quickly have a peek here. A peeky peek. Indeed, it is a rematch of last year's World Series. Let's go, my friends. Let us go well. I certainly would not object if we could have Tommy McDonald recovered in time for uh, the first game of the World Series. I'd be pretty happy about that. I mean, I wasn't going to activate you anyway, but thanks for letting me know, Caleb. Okay, come on, big game. Boom. Maybe not the biggest game for you. Um, actually, a little bit of a rough game for you, but you still got it done when it mattered, and that's really what matters. Yes, mattering is what matters. Um, Avila, by the way, won league championship, um, won the LCS MVP. Moya does it again. Oh, Robert Diago wants to make things a little bit interesting. Oh. 
Diago didn't pitch badly, though, at least for him. He's definitely really struggled in this. Um, very nice. Um, Diago definitely pitched better than he had pitched throughout here. Look at Mike Giles being inspired and pitching his very best when it really counts. Um, you love to see it. You love to see it. Come on, Tommy. Bring it home. Boom! Back to fucking back. This postseason run almost felt a little bit too easy. I'll be honest with you. Now, that Division Series was a classic. Um, at least until it wasn't when we just started scoring runs at will. But, man. Sergio Bermudez got World Series MVP. Well done. Speaking of MVPs, let's actually talk, let's obviously finish simming, uh, a glory success. Wow, thanks Caleb, you jackass. Hey guys, I'm back. Give me a World Series ring, please. You ain't getting shit from me, dude. You were hurt when we needed you. Yeah, I'm gonna sign the guys out for 11 months. That seems like a great idea. What kind of potato do you think I am? I don't think it's a tiny bit unfair that so few people make the playoffs when we have 32 teams. Um, I'm, I'll be curious to see if the game is going to make any changes to that. I mean, I don't care. Um, I pretty much punch my ticket every season, but, you know, uh, it would be kind of cool. He is delighted. Well, I'm delighted that you're delighted. Um, we're going to do off-season stuff all next episode. The only thing I'm... Oh. Interesting. Very interesting. Okay. I will make one off-season decision right this second because it's the easiest one I'm going to make all season. Done. Like, the... Downside is I get a fantastic player at a deep discount. The upside, of course, is that I get a draft pick. And I would be delighted with either one of those things. Um, Mike, if this is the end of our time together, let me just say thank you. I don't think we play as well as we do without you. Um, I'm not saying I won't try to bring him back. We can definitely have those conversations. But I have a couple of starters that I think deserve at least an opportunity, and so I'm somewhat unlikely to bring him back. But we'll definitely have that conversation next episode. But thank you, Mike. Um, you brought us two World Series, uh, and you played an important role in each one of them. So, Mr. Giles, I wish you well in the future if we cannot come to terms. Uh, thank you for your incredible performance. Uh, okie doke. Back to how the season went. Who were our big contributors who helped us get to the second consecutive World Series? Manny Pozo really became a team leader this year. Um, moving him to third base was a brilliant decision. He seemed really happy there. He was an outstanding defender there. A few errors, but you're always going to get errors no matter what you do. Uh, he had a very impressive batting line, and he just showed growth top to bottom. Um, he's going to get a big payday, and frankly, I think he deserves it. So, Pozo, well done, my friend. You took to this new role with aplomb, and you helped us to our second consecutive World Series. Clint Daly. Friends, when I got the idea, what if I move Herrera to second and Pozo to third... I wonder how Daly will do. Uh, this is not what I anticipated. And I am over the moon. Uh, Daly very realistically might win a gold glove in his very first major league season. Um, boy. This was my most important move, I think, of the offseason. Well, not the most important, because there's others that are equally important. So, Rusty Oliver. Had a nice little bounce back campaign um, and was rewarded for it with a very nice contract. 
Oliver is just a professional's professional, right? This is a guy that we drafted in the sixth round because he was weirdly considered a pitcher, and instead we turned him into one of the best outfielders in the game. Um, so Oliver contributed a very high level. Avila. Now, important to note, remember, DH comes with a war penalty. So that means that for him to get four wins as a designated hitter is pretty insane. Uh, it definitely shows that he still hit at a very, very high level. Uh, he did strike out more than normal, but look how many more games he played. We got another 20 games started and another 13 games total. And about another 70 at-bats. Uh, 60, actually. And he still played at a very, very high level. Um, he also broke the the twenty homer barrier, which he'd been struggling to get through. So, however, the real question is when will he steal a base? He stole one in his rookie season. Worst player ever. I'm joking. His raw WAR totals. I'm gonna be honest with you. Make it not a cinch. He's gonna be a Hall of Famer, but this is gonna be a very hard record to ignore. Assuming he continued to play at a high level for another three to four seasons, uh, I think we might have two Hall of Famers. Jeff Pierce. We wanted a big-time power bat, and we got one. It's also fair to ask, did we get the best version of Jeff Pierce? And I think the answer to that question is a very firm no. I think there's still more that he left on the table, and I'm looking forward to what he can accomplish in year two of his deal with the Pittsburgh Pirates. Sergio Bermudez was not a great first baseman, but he was good enough and was 45 homers. And that's going to play no matter how you do. And he even ended the season hitting 287. Uh, very well deserved. Chris Taylor. Now, Taylor might have been the only move that didn't work out for us. Ever since coming to Pittsburgh, he just disappeared. He just couldn't hit anymore. Um, defensively, he was great. Um, he was great. He did a really good job defensively. Only four pass balls the whole season. Well, technically seven, because he also had a few with Billy as well. Um, I am not at all convinced that he's going to be the very best catcher that we could get for ourselves. So we might want to think about replacing him at some point. And Chris Neff was a bit Neff. However, I cannot ignore Josh Lynch's incredible contributions. And even though he only played 80 games, uh, he really brought stabilization to the top of the lineup. He was a dynamic threat on the bases. Everything you wanted a center fielder, Josh Lynch was. And so I'm really excited to see him come back and be healthy next season. Also can't ignore Bobby Herrera. Although it's very important to remember that he has fallen off drastically. Bobby Herrera is number one on my list to trade. Which just a season ago, I was talking about making drastic changes to make Bobby Herrera a better player. He's, he's too injury prone. When someone tells you who they are, believe them. And what he is, is a man who has missed several weeks with injuries. And even more injuries in the minor leagues. He can't be trusted. And I know he got Rookie of the Year. And I get that. And I'm grateful to him for his contributions to our success. I don't see him being a Pittsburgh Pirate next season. That's just where we are right now. I don't see him being a Pittsburgh Pirate as long as he's going to be that bad at defense and most important, that injury prone. Let's talk pitching. Let's talk pitching because I think we could easily argue that pitching was even more important than our offense. Starting with Jesus Moya. Of all the players on this team, his breakout is what almost dragged us, quite frankly, to our second World Series. We've had a lot of trouble developing homegrown pitchers, especially rotation guys. Moya seems to be that one exception. 
assuming he stays healthy. Um, he's very he's got a very good case to make Cy Young this season. Uh, with his he led the league in WAR, he led the league in ERA, he got 17 wins, almost 200 strikeouts. This is the kind of thing that the voters really love. Uh, I'm very excited to see if he's able to make it. So, big game Tommy McDonald, of course, uh, came back strong. Not quite as good as his 2045. Uh, his strikeout rate dipped a little bit, actually dipped significantly. Um, so that is a bit of a warning. That is something that does concern me. But he also cut his walk rate, which is pretty hard. But his strikeout rate did drop. And the question is, is it going to be a one-year thing? Is he going to come back next season, punching people out like there's no tomorrow? Or is this the beginning of him aging to the point where he's going to become a liability? We will find out together. Robert Thiago, I'm not convinced that you are a premium pitcher anymore. Um, your strikeout rate also fell, but your home run rate went up. And while you were still a positive contributor, I don't want to, to make it seem like you weren't, you're the only guy on the team with a big movement issue, and that may be something we need to consider. Caleb, your 24 starts were superb, but you only made 24 starts. Thankfully, you don't cost me very much money, but that's really going to hold you back if you can't figure that out. Joe Burton was a big-time arm in the back of the pen, and we're not bringing him back because he's going to want $12 million. $14 million, pardon me. That ain't happening. That is not happening. So, Jake LeMaster, you only want $4 million a year? And I gotta be real, you're a pre, you are a pretty good reliever, but I don't know if I'm gonna give you a deal that's that long. So I'm gonna make, oh, you only want $3 million now. Fine. I think $3 million is very reasonable for a player of his capabilities. So, yeah. Um, man, it still hurts a little bit that I had to take Avila off of, um, off of catcher. But I think it's going to extend his career by a significant percentage, and I think it's going to be good. I think it's going to be good. Um, also... Because I'm trying to do some math in my head here. I don't think we're going to be done with the Pirates by the time OOTP 23 comes out. As much as I want to play a new team and move on to my next challenge, I really want to see if Gunnels makes the Hall of Fame. So I think what I'm going to do is I think that I'm going to um, maybe carry on with the Pirates at least a little bit in the OTP 23? Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Um, if you're getting tired of the Pirates, if you really like the Pirates, want to see me keep playing with them, uh, we may just continue that series from OTP 22 into 23. Uh, eventually, I will definitely uh, change to a new team, uh, starting over again from 2020, of course, or 2021, rather. But let me know in the comments. Also, if you haven't voted already, the community poll is still open. You can just click on my channel, click on the community tab, and you can vote for who the next team is going to be. It's looking like the Guardians, but we'll see how people think and how they vote. But for now, my friends, thank you very much for watching. This has been Ed Guardian, and I bid you good day.